Vamos, Carol, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to another episode of South Stand Signings. And we are back here again. It is 3 a.m. as we're recording this to go through all of the latest rumors surrounding Leeds United. And boy, there is a lot for us to get our teeth dug into once again. Big updates, big, big updates in the Atavia deal. Leeds touting not just one, but multiple attacking reinforcements, as well as big updates in the Rafinha transfer saga. But quickly, before we do get our teeth stuck into all of that juicy action, statistics have shown that 72% of you are not subscribed. So if you could help support me, support you, and join the forward thinking pioneers as we try to get 3.5k before the new season starts, then that would be very much appreciated. For now, let's get straight into the meat of the action. The first story is regarding the man we were literally just talking about, and that is Otavio. And Leeds United have been handed a massive transfer boost, according to Mr. Andrew Hawkins. That is right. Leeds United have been handed a huge transfer boost amidst interest in Porto winger Otavio as per Leeds Live. It appears Liverpool are not going to follow up on their initial interest in the Porto winger Otavio. And that could mean that the door is open for Leeds to submit a second offer. It was believed Leeds initially made a 30 million euro bid which was turned down by Porto. It has also been reported that the Porto ace has a release clause set at around just 40 million euros. Otavio who turns 27 in February seems to be at a pricier end of the market for Leeds and it looks like they'll be waiting for the situation with Rafinha to be resolved before they make any decisions on bringing in another winger. That is right. Multiple outlets reporting now that Leeds are not just going to be going in for one attacker but hopefully at least two if Rafinha is to go and we're waiting basically to see what happens with this whole Rafinha debacle to see whether we're going to go in for Gakpo are we going to go in for Otavio who are we actually going to go in for we don't know but what we do know is that regardless of what happens with Rafinha it does look like we are still going to go big in for De Catalere we will be talking more about that uh, that later however this is very exciting this is very very exciting news very exciting if you want Otavio as well we were speaking about it yesterday and again, again, this just doesn't really seem to be getting your chops going, you know what I mean? The same way that Gakpo does. Gakpo gets you gagging for Poe. However, this guy... Ah. So far, not a massive reception around Leeds United. And you've got to ask yourself, how is this going to go with the fan base? How is this going to go for the image of the club? Is this going to help rebuild it? Is this going to help rejuvenate the fan base? Get people energised and excited for a new season if this is our main winging, uh, wing addition? Who knows? Only time will tell. I think he is a very suitable player for Leeds United's new system. Again, because of his uh, elder age compared to the other ones, he does have a lot more experience that he could add to Leeds United. He can also feature very well off that right-hand side, make a good partnership with Jack Harrison. And let's be real here. Our attacking output has not been sensational, especially the end of last season. Even when, even at the end of Bielsa's tenure, we just weren't putting teams away. We weren't creating enough, definitely. And when we did get the chances, we definitely weren't taking them. Could this be the man to fix our problems? For me, he's not my first target. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and try to hype something up for no reason. He's not my first target I would much rather go for Cody Gakpo personally I think the younger age more potential to grow further and I think he's a better player I do think he is a better player however Liverpool apparently are not interested in Otavio and maybe that means Leeds could get him for a little bit cheaper as well than that 34 million pound 40 million pound release clause that they are asking for but even then even then 14 goals in 150 appearances for Porto not insane not insane not crazy and I think because because we are losing our top goal scorer in Rafinha, we're going to need some more goals coming from out wide. I really do think we are. And I really think I'd much rather just bite the bullet on someone like Gakpo. Even Noah Lang. I know those stories have gone quiet. But there are a lot of wingers that I'd rather get ahead of him. And for me, I know that Liverpool pulled out. But it's still a drop for me. I'm still not too keen on this one. But let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments section down below. And speaking of things I want you guys to let me know about. It isn't quite transferred. Well, it technically is. Leeds have transferred in our new transfer 
training kit it has been released and look at this man this is absolutely beautiful look at the colors man something about that that shade of blue that shade of navy and that and, and the, the shade of yellow even it's like a yellowy orange musty gold kind of color it looks absolutely sexual absolutely out i mean look at this absolute source demon rocking it as well roking it should i say and ah, that was really bad <laughs> i should have just stuck with rocking because his name is rocker or roker however you want to say it uh or the big man robin robin oh look at this man robin and rocking oh yeah, that looks so good man that looks so good the fit's nice as well i do like the fit i like something that it looks flexible it looks stretchy but it's also nice and tight on the skin it just looks classy, man. This, this is the real deal. And I'm not going to lie to you. Our last training kit from last year, absolutely horrible. I bought the jumper for some reason. Terrible. The top was all right. The, the version of this, nowhere near the same. Nowhere near as good as this one. The material, especially on the sleeves, it, it didn't quite slap. You know, it wasn't flexible. Didn't give you a lot of breathing room. The jumper, horrific. Horrific, man. The fit the the collar on it the way it looked the design terrible this absolutely sexual man absolutely sexual and for me this is a cop this is probably our best signing we've made so far this window is getting this kid in but now on to actual transfer news Leeds United are still searching around for that midfield replacement and we are now not just looking at apparently the Rassam Ball Sports Dons but apparently we're also still looking at Sander Burge with uh, their manager coming out and saying nothing I can do to stop Leeds signing his £35 million star. And it's a manager, of course, Leeds are very familiar with Mr. Paul Heckingbottom. And he's basically said if Leeds hit the release clause, then there's nothing they can do about it. But I don't see Leeds hitting his £35 million release clause. For me, if we do go for him, I think it will be a maximum of £20-25 million that we do spend on him. It has gone very cold right now and it does look like we are probably looking closer closer at Kamara. Do you guys still want Sanderberg? Surprisingly, guys seem to have gone off him a little bit since losing Rafinha, or since losing Calvin Phillips, should I say. And some of you guys are a bit more on the on the Kamara bandwagon now. And I can't blame you, to be honest. Kamara does look like a top, top baller. You know I want Tyler Adams not to hark on about it again. But that does look like that's in serious jeopardy now. But do you think that Sanderberg is worth £35 million? In fact, let me pose a better question to you. How much would you be willing to pay for Sanderberg? the Burge. If this was the guy Leeds said we're going for him, forget Kamara, forget Tyler Adams, forget all these dons. We're going for Sander Burge or Sander Burger, should I say. How many chips are you willing to throw in there? 30 million, 35 million, 25 million, 20 million even. Let me know down in the comments section. Down be low. Now, on to the main departure, the main story that has probably been going on around Leeds United for the past week. And apparently, Arsenal have reportedly pulled out of the race to sign Leeds United winger Rafinha, a target for Barcelona valued at 50 million euros. Well, he's not valued at 50 million euros because Leeds have come out numerous times saying that we're valuing him at actually 75 million euros, which is 65 million pounds that we're, we're we're charging Arsenal and they're coming out and saying 53 million or 50 million euros. I'm not seeing it myself, mate. This is uh, this is a, a bit of a fraudulent statistic that I've seen fudged up here. But after making the Gabriel Jesus transfer, obviously Arsenal are not absolutely caking in the peas. They're not able to splash the cash shake man saw style. I'll put it that way. And uh, are they going to be able to afford Rafinha? According to this, Arsenal have pulled out of the race for Leeds United winger Rafinha after completing the deal for the Manchester City striker. Jesus will join Arsenal for a reported sum of 52 million euros with the move set to be made official next week. The Brazil international will reportedly earn 11.6 million euros per year, making him the highest paid footballer at the club. That is mental. That is mental. Is he Arsenal's best player? It's a question for you guys to decide down below. I saw quite a funny thing coming out um, before. Uh, shout out to the Don, by the way, but he was coming out and saying, basically, we haven't had a striker that scored 20 goals in a season since Aubameyang. And uh, unfortunately, Gabriel Jesus has only scored a maximum of 14 league goals in his best ever season for Manchester City. Is he worth becoming the squad's or the club's highest paid player? I guess that's a story for another day. But will them splashing that much cash on him really throw the Rafinha move into jeopardy? 
I'm not so sure it will because then there's other reports coming out saying that Arsenal are still on for that meeting next week with Leeds United over Rafinha and apparently they are still willing to hit that £65 million valuation that Leeds desire i don't know man the whole the whole thing is is filled with contradictory reports i personally trust that they are still going to have the meeting next week i still think in my heart of hearts that he will somehow end up at barcelona i don't know what it is exactly but something in there deep down it's just telling me you know my mind is telling me no but my body my body is telling me yeah and um, speaking of my body telling me yes Leeds United Marsh could form a scary duo with Jerzymi Nyamzi Jerzinho Nyamzi transfer that is right Leeds United are targeting another centre half the talk of centre halves has gone a little bit quiet recently you know Nathan Collins not quite getting the same airtime as he had been in the weeks prior however Leeds have not neglected this position and it is only a matter of time before we do actually go and make a signing in that position could it just be Jorginho Nyamzi during his debut campaign at Strasbourg last season the 25 year old won 23 tackles making 47 blocks 42 interceptions and 121 clearances over 34 league appearances and he is valued at just 6.75 million pounds now do we need do we need this guy do we have space for another guy like this i think if we go for a center half for me you go big or you go home you leave it and you trust the plethora of center halves that we do have on our payroll you trust cooper to stay fit for another year you trust strike to grow and develop as a character back there you trust cock to start finding some serious form you trust Lorente to start managing to win some aerial duels and maybe Leeds could have a little bit of a stronger season next year especially with the double pivot that we're probably going to deploy with the two dms Nah, not 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 a not not a, not a starter for me. Bit of a non-starter, if you ask me. I think we go big for a Collins or a Tarkovsky or or you know one of these renowned Premier League proven centre halves. Otherwise, I don't think it happens for me. And according to the same publication, Phil Hay has come out revealing that Charles de Catalere have had some major major developments while speaking on twitter the journalist said leeds united increasingly serious about club bruges charles de catalere with arsenal stepping up interest in rafinha who is viewed as a forward and leeds are also in the market for a winger if rafinha leaves too that is right we were speaking earlier is it going to be a tavio is it going to be gakpo could it be noah lang or could this be smoke and mirrors someone commented the other day and i quite liked it actually he was saying what if this is all smoke and mirrors james what if they're going out with all these names, whether it be the Catalere, whether it be Noah Lang, whether it be Gakpo, whether it even be Otavio. And they're throwing all these numbers about. They're throwing these rumors around, fudging the numbers, if you will. And all of a sudden, they just come in out of nowhere and completely left field with another name. Kind of like how they did with Mark Roker. Let's be real here. It just came completely out of the blue. We've been talking about Tyler Adams for months now. We've been talking about Kamara for a hot, hot minute. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Mark Roker just suddenly slides his way. He's reported to be interested in Leeds United. Next thing you know, the next week is wrapped up. Could we be seeing another? A random name just plucked out of thin air right before Rafinha leaves after Rafinha leaves I'm not so sure it's an interesting one it is an interesting one however my hope my faith is still in Cody Gakpo hey you know what a dream would be I mean this is absolutely crazy don't shoot the messenger here all right don't shoot because this is this is just a pipe dream and if it happens I will literally shave my entire face uh my the whole thing the whole whack you know probably the head as well oh the, the head there'll be no head only shoulders over here uh if we signed Noah Lang all right Noah Lang for one wing we signed Gakpo for the other wing you know because he can play left wing as well we signed the Catalere to play in the middle of both of them in a 4-2-3-1 formation he's in the middle in that cam role and then we signed Tyler Adams yeah Tyler Adams you had Roca you had Noah Lang you had Gakpo you had the Catalere you had Bamford just in front of him oh my god are you telling me that team right there would not be challenging for at least the Europa Conference League come on now that would be absolutely ins- sensational we'll probably only get two of those we'll probably only get like a, a Gakpo and a De Catalere but still even then that's still good moves if you ask me that is still money money moves and speaking of money moves the last story of today surrounding Leeds United's midfield 
is James McAtee. Apparently, Leeds United are still very keen to sign Manchester City's James McAtee on a permanent deal. After selling Manchester City Calvin Phillips, it did look like James, uh, Leeds' deal for James McAtee was basically out of the water considering we didn't make it a part of our deal and we instead went for Darko Giabi from Manchester City. This was a bit of a head-scratcher for Leeds fans everywhere. Why do we not go in for McAtee? Why do we not go in for Lavia? Why do we let these players slip under the rug? Why did we go for someone else instead? But apparently Leeds are still very interested in signing James McAtee on a permanent deal. The 19-year-old attacking midfielder was a standout performer and helped City's under-23 side win the Premier League 2 title last season, recording 18 goals and 7 assists in 23 league appearances. Pretty damn saucy. He featured six times for Guardiola's senior team, but his first team opportunities could be limited in 2022-23 due to the plethora of attacking talent already at the Spaniards' display. Disposal. A switch to a fellow Premier League club has been mooted for McAtee with Leeds, Brighton and Southampton all believed to be closely monitoring his situation. While a lone move seems more likely, journalist Ryan Taylor claims that Leeds will look to sign the teenager on a permanent basis this summer. Right, why did we not get this deal part of the Calvin Phillips situation? I know the Calvin Phillips thing isn't wrapped up yet, but why did we not include this as part of that? I'm not so sure that we are going to get him, man. I would love to get him. Don't get me wrong, I would love to get him, but... The, the, the fact that we signed Darko Giabi instead, are they going to want to sell us two of their best talents in the same window? This is Manchester City. They don't roll like that. Although they should give us a bit of a favour after we apparently sold them a, a cheaper cut deal just because of the fact that Calvin Phillips wanted to go there. Apparently, there were better fees and better transfer offers for Calvin Phillips than what Manchester City offered. However, because the player was so keen on a move to Manchester City with obviously Guardiola holding such a big draw over it that Lee decided to accept a cut price for it. But who would you guys like? What midfielder do you want to see donning that beautiful new training kit that we did just see? Who do you want to see playing for Leeds United last season? Let me know down in the comment section down below. But for now, guys, I will see you guys soon. Out of all, my brothers and my sisters. <laughs>